The day U.S. Air Flight 1549 touched down in New York's Hudson River, the water temperature was 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna demonstrate right now what it looks like and what happens to a person when they're in 41 degree water. Now, before one of the hosts gets into the tank, let's quickly rewind. Our universe was formed 13.7 billion years ago, following the Big Bi- Okay, let's rewind a little less. Ah, that's better. It took 700 pounds of crystal party ice to bring the nearly 200 gallons of water in the tank to the proper temperature, 41 degrees. Which, according to science, is the precise thermatological point at which a man's testicles shrivel to the size of a zygote. 15 minutes of exposure to water at this temperature will result in unconsciousness. In 90 minutes, you'll be dead. And after two hours, you become your own Ben & Jerry's flavor. And then it was time for the host to decide which of them would take the frigid plunge. Who's getting in the water? Not me. No. no. <laughs> oh. Wait. Yes, but I am not American, so it does not count. Oh. Okay. All right, well, let's do, uh, let's do it fair like Americans would. Rochambeau. Okay, you guys go and I will be the judge. Whoa. Cheating Canadian uh, bastard. No, mm. that gives you an advantage. I'm actually from Wisconsin. How about we play Travis? It's an old Wisconsin game. How do you play that? Travis, get in the fucking tank. Oh, intern. <sighs> What's the point of this demonstration? You know, other than to prove that our intern will do anything for just 50 bucks. The point is to demonstrate how quickly the human body will succumb to the debilitating effects of hypothermia. And to recognize how fortunate the passengers on flight 1549 were to be rescued so quickly. Languishing in the frigid water would have resulted in near certain tragedy. Now we're not kidding, Travis. Water is 41 degrees Fahrenheit, the same temperature it was on January 15th when the plane went into Hudson, all right? Now, Travis, once you're in there, we're gonna give you the seat cushion to simulate you actually have to hold on to this thing while you're freezing. Yeah, for as long as you're conscious. Okay. All right. And remember, if you don't stay conscious the whole time, I'm not saying it's bad for the show. I mean, those are the kind of, those are the kind of things that make YouTube hits. It'd be really funny. It'd be really cool. How is it? 10 bucks a screen. Yes. All right, Ooh. now just so that you know, we did not do this willy-nilly. We have a thoracic surgeon with us, Dr. Harmik Sukasian from Cedar sinai He's gonna monitor uh, Travis. Hypothermia is a situation wherein the body's been deprived of its normal uh, thermal regulation, usually cold air or cold water, which then basically suck the heat out of the body. When you took this intern, Travis, did you think it would be this exciting? Is it cold or are you just acting? I quit. <laughs> You're not getting paid, you can't quit. <laughs> cold water is much more dangerous than cold air in that cold water will rob the body of its heat 32 times faster than cold air will. The doctor is supervising our demonstration. Well, when you get in cold water such as this, you know, you, your, your initial reaction is to take a big gasp like he did. He will also provide emergency aid if there are signs of shock, incoherence, or cardiac arrest in Brad Sherwood. These experiments make him crazy nervous. And inexplicably, he reverses the titles of very bad Jim Carrey movies. And I have a DVD of Mr. Penguin's Poppers in case you need some inspiration. Those are good. Yeah. And what are the signs of hypothermia? The order of events that you would expect would be initially uh, shock, uh, where a patient is disor person is disoriented. Once they become oriented, they'll, they'll try and thrash around. They start shivering. They start having teeth chattering. His heart rate's doing okay, it's rising. Then they'll start losing their ability to have uh, normal thought processes. They become less oriented. They become less lucid. In the field of medicine, this inability to think clearly is known as, quote, going busy. Ah! Your uh, teeth start chattering like his is doing. You start shivering. Like, I can feel his shivering. Your heart rate will start to rise. Um, as the colder you get, your body starts shutting down more. You stop shivering as much, and that's a bad sign. So let's hope he doesn't stop shivering okay. pretty soon. Continued exposure to the frigid water will next lead to the loss of fine motor skills. I'm sure he feels already it's getting harder and harder to hold on to this cushion. True, true. Um, whereas uh, if he had something that was holding him up without much effort on his part, it would certainly be uh, 
more conducive to him. So he's got to keep his muscles tight on that cushion because if the cushion gets away, he's done. Yes, and his heart, heart rate is rising. How are you feeling? Cold. Following the loss of fine motor skills, the body loses the shivering reflex and its ability to keep warm. When people are submerged and their face goes underwater, and this is called a mammalian reflex, and it's the body's natural reflexive tendency to shunt blood away from the periphery and into the core, into the heart and into the brain to preserve itself. That's the main thing that people who have been in cold, frigid water for prolonged periods of time to be able to be resuscitated. My muscles are, my muscles are seizing. It's a little harder to breathe. It's getting harder to speak. So, you know, I think he's having a hard time. They start cramping and they can't perform almost any uh, motor activities, such as uh, keeping themselves afloat. How long has he been in? Well, he's been in now for a few minutes. Um, he's already beginning to exhibit signs of hypothermia. He's shallow breathing. He's I not. Can't, I can't feel my fingertips. All yeah. right, let's go. Right, come out. Eventually, what happens is that your temperature on your body comes down so low that it starts affecting your heart. And if your heart gets affected, then your heart will stop. And if your heart stops at that point, certainly you will die. So it's time to get him out. Wow. All right. Can you come out, please? All right, you're freezing. Jeez, quickly. All right, let's get the EMT in here. Uh, Tony, you got him? Got him. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna walk him into the pool. Right now. I'm gonna turn him over my shoulder. All right. Let's start walking into the pool now. There are several ways to warm up a person suffering from hypothermia, and since no one volunteered to snuggle with Travis, this pool will do nicely. Breathe. <clears throat> Breathe. Open get down mouth. to your neck. Yeah, I can't feel my toes. With prolonged hypothermia, with prolonged exposure to cold water, hypothermia gets more severe, your muscle coordination decreases, your ability to perform muscular activity decreases, hence your ability to hold on to this rotation device decreases. And it's a catch-22. The worse you hold on, the more you sink. The more you sink, the worse you can hold on. And so your fate, as time goes on, gets worse and worse. I don't want to do that again. So tell us how you're feeling. I'm good. Thank you. Good? You gotta take your pants off and your shirt off. This wet clothing has to come off. In an emergency situation, someone who's got a life vest on is at a greater advantage than someone who has to fish around for a, a uh, flotation device, take the coordination to put their arms around the device, lock it in, and then hold on and not let go. Meanwhile, it's been a few minutes since Travis got out of the pool. You can see his breathing is going easier as well. His heart rate's coming down appropriately. And just to prove that we're not total assholes. This is the last time that you let the hosts talk you into playing Travis. That's the last time I'm ever working for you. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the doctor, we also had Travis looked over by a couple of uh, nurses. Yeah, yeah, they're nurses. Thank you. Better now? Much better now. All right, maybe I'll work for you again. <laughs> so. Without even testing the life jacket, it's pretty clear which flotation device is going to be the most advantageous if you crash and land in frigid water. Coming up. All right, let's go as fast as you can. It's a horrible landing. We simulate an airplane emergency evacuation resulting from a deadly water landing. Get in the water! Yeah! 